Hey friends, let's talk about prolapse and squats or any types of movements that really create that feeling of heaviness, bulging or pressure in the pelvic floor. So let's say you are bending over to pick, pick up a toy. Not bad, feel nothing, but then maybe you're bending over to pick up a really heavy bag of soil or rocks or rice or just something really heavy. And suddenly you feel pressure in your pelvic floor. Here's what I want you to try. Inhale, let it go. And then before you lift, do a slight Kegel. So exhale, engage the pelvic floor. And exhale, breathe out as you lift. The reason why the exhale works is as you inhale, you increase pressure in the abdomen. So if you are breath holding or increasing pressure as you lift, you actually increase pressure inside the abdomen and then onto the pelvic floor as well as the prolapse already increasing pressure onto the pelvic floor. So we don't want to double the pressure on the pelvic floor. So what you're actually going to do is exhale, release some of that pressure that's in your abdominal cavity so that there's less downward pressure into the pelvic floor. So using your breath to your advantage really helps. Now the same goes for things like squats. So if you're squatting, getting up off the toilet or the chair, you don't feel much. But when you, let's say, go down towards the floor or get into a deeper squat, that's when you start to feel a bit of bulging or pressure. You have multiple options. You don't have to go into the point of your range of motion where you feel pressure or discomfort. You can stop a little bit earlier. So what I mean by that is you can stop here. <clears throat> let's say this feels really good, but this does not. Stop a little bit higher and train your body to work from that range of motion. So inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. And so you're shortening the range of motion, building your butt strength, your core strength, your pelvic floor strength within that range of motion. And over the course of a few days or weeks, you're gonna notice that you can inch your way further down. Are you gonna be able to go from here to here in two weeks? Likely not, but our goal is to make progress. The other thing is in real life, when we're picking up our babies or kids or toys or anything up off the floor, we are rarely lifting things from a deep squat like that. Typically, we would use a deadlift strategy or a lunge down. So you have multiple options. So you don't want you to feel like you always have to be in that deep squat, you know, do that exhale to lift. But we are practicing it during exercise so that you're building resilience and strength. Okay, here's another tip on if that strategy that I just showed you right now still doesn't feel the greatest. What I want you to try is instead of ex inhaling down, exhaling up, I want you to inhale down as you get close to the bottom, start the exhale and then stand up. So I'm going to show you. Option one look like this. Inhale. Belly relaxes, exhale, <sighs> pelvic floor draws in, core draws in as you stand up. Option two is inhale down, start to exhale. <sighs> Notice that I started to exhale as I was still traveling downward. So in any of that really symptomatic range of motion, so let's say this is good, but as soon as I go past 90 degrees, I start to feel symptoms, that's when I start to do the exhale, okay? so. Inhale, symptoms start. So you're doing a light, slow exhale. Um, you can also choose the or the sh vocalizations, depending on what feels the best for you to feel your deep core. Because remember, your deep abs and your pelvic floor turn on and off at the same time. So anything that helps engage your lower abs or deep abs will also help engage your pelvic floor. And just remember that symptoms aren't always a bad thing. It indicates what your body's current abilities are. Sometimes you won't feel symptoms at all until you push yourself and get into lower ranges of motion. Or you maybe you don't feel it when you're doing nothing with no weight, but when you start to hold weight, suddenly you're like, mm, I feel a bit of heaviness. So you're gonna learn to work within your tolerance and also start to build strength within the comfort level that you have so that over time you can push that and gain more strength and a deeper range of motion, more confidence, so that you're not having to overthink your symptoms all the time. Okay, so to summarize, you can use your breath, you can shorten the range of motion, um, and just remember that you have multiple options in real life to do things. 
during your exercises, yes, we're intentionally practicing squats and deadlifts and you know this exercise and that exercise, but in real life, when you're chasing after your kids, you're picking things up off the floor, you don't have to do it this way if it's symptomatic. Eventually, I want you to get to the point where you have multiple options. You can lift like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, but if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. That's the goal we're gonna work ourselves up to. All right, hope that was helpful. <coughs> if you have any questions, please don't, afraid, don't be um, afraid to ask me. Send me an email, um, send me a DM and we can chat. Thanks.